I'm Jason Lair. I'm a painter who lives in South Bend, Indiana, and I teach painting and drawing at the University of Notre Dame. And I'm here at TCU for my exhibition. It seemed like a good idea at the time. It's a uh, show of brand new works from uh, basically January of 2015 till June of 2015. And it continues many of my interests that I've worked uh, with over the course of my career, primarily narrative, the ways in which paintings can tell stories, particularly in our contemporary moment. And the types of stories I'm interested in telling involve the ways in which identity, in particular working class masculine identity, is shaped or formed by culture. So the real big development in this show is the use of these really kind of crazily shaped panels. And that idea came about because I tend to use these really crazy digital forms derived from like 8-bit video games and 16-bit video games and digital glitching and computer type faces and that sort of thing. So what I wanted to do, that's appeared sort of on the surface of the paintings previously on sort of rectangular or circular paintings. And what I wanted to do is sort of extend that visual language to the actual form of the painting itself. So all of the paintings in this show were designed in Illustrator as shapes and then cut out on a CNC machine. And then they get like a really nice maple surface laminated to them. And then I edge trim the them. It's like a lot of woodshop geekery, frankly. And uh, it allows me to sort of to extend that interest in sort of the digital language of our culture to the surfaces and the formats of the paintings as well. So they're kind of loosely based on, again, glitching in video games and uh, 8-bit, 16-bit graphics and graphic design sources and that sort of thing. So another part, another point of departure for that is, you know, the colors that I use are all tend to be fairly saturated. And again, I'm thinking about the ways in which screen culture and digital culture sort of infiltrate our lives. And what are the opportunities for painting in the midst of all this sort of screen-based culture? And my sort of argument is, is for painting to kind of co-opt that language. So to use the look of, you know, Photoshop filters and that sort of thing. And for me, it's, it's a, tied up into my interest in painting and the history of painting, particularly as it relates to the meeting point of technology and ideology. And I, I think of that historically. So I think about like the development of uh, oil paint and perspective in the Renaissance and how, you know, it's not like, you know, in the Byzantine era, they didn't know how to paint. It's that there weren't visual systems developed yet or technologies developed yet that privileged a certain way of working. So, you know, Michelangelo looks the way that Michelangelo does, not just because he was incredibly talented, but because he's from an ideological underpinning that privileges humanism and sort of the, the human as the primary subject, but also he had the benefit of the development of perspective systems, both linear and atmospheric, but also the materiality of oil paint allows those paintings to look the way they do. In the 19th century, the development of the camera, of course, that sort of explodes what possibilities are available in painting, either as a way of co-opting the, the look of the camera, the, the ways in which the camera sees the world, or as a refutation of that. Um, also, the sort of the development of new pigments and colors as all the Industrial Revolution. So I, I'm really interested in that sort of that arc of the way paintings look being connected to technology and, and ideology. And so I'm trying to be mindful of that in my own work and think about what are the opportunities and responsibilities and ways in which painting can be conversant with our contemporary moment.